What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So quick video today. So I just wanted to take a look at a couple videos that have been released by the guys over at Reillusion. Um, they're the guys that make iClone and Character Creator. And I just kind of wanted to look at some of the functions that are in here. Um, so I, I think that what they're doing over there is really interesting. And so I want to cover it on the channel a little bit. So I will link to both videos in the notes down below. Remember that there is a Character Creator tool, which is specifically designed for creating characters and an iClone, which is more for like animations and riggings and other things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so there's two videos that I want to highlight. So there's one on the Reillusion website for the iClone 8 work in progress. There's another one for the Character Creator 4 work in progress. We've talked a little bit about the iClone 8 before, um, but this is specifically highlighting some new features that I think are really interesting. So this video reference uh, rotoscope or tool for actually like animating is really interesting to me because as someone who's not really a great animation or character person, what it does is it really gives me the ability to use kind of that reference in order to kind of match real life. So this is something that I could really get behind because again, I mean, just creating the animations myself, not being an animator um, is something that is a little bit intimidating. So I'm super excited to see how that function works. All right, so the iClone 8 Pose Mixer is basically a tool designed to take multiple different poses and combine them together. So what you can do is you can either like average out the different parts, that's what it looks like, or um, they've also got some functions in a minute which are a little bit more interesting to me, which allow you to combine different parts of poses. So what it does is it allows you to select like the lower portion of a character or the upper portion of a character and then apply parts of those poses to that character. So for example, what you can do is you can use the same hand or arm animations while also making the character sit down. So what that does is that allows you to mix the poses together. So if that works as smoothly as it looks, that gives you access to a lot of new poses that you can create using information you already have. So I'm interested to see how this works in practice. I obviously haven't had a chance to try any of this, but just looking at it with the way that they're doing it inside of the video, it looks really easy to do. So the body track section to me is something that seems a little more advanced than what I would probably. So, so the body track section is interesting as well. It gives you control um, of the different parts in here. What I really found interesting in here is when they picked a movement and they kind of offset it like this. So when the character, both feet were kind of moving back and forth and then they took one movement and kind of like offset it so that they were kicking at different, uh, different speeds. So what that does is that allows you to use an existing movement in order to create a completely different movement, which I think is something that's really interesting as well. Um, beyond this, a lot of this stuff seems a little bit... And so it does seem like you can apply that to other things as well. But again, I'm interested to see how easy that is to use um, in actual practice. So there's a fair amount more stuff in here about the different tracks that they have. The facial tracks is also interesting to me because you can basically animate the sliders um, that you get from like a character creator character or something like that in order to create these different uh, facial expressions. So you can use this in order to animate those facial expressions. So, um, so that's something I'm definitely interested in trying out as well. All right, so now let's take a look at the Character Creator 4 video that they just put out. So this one to me, Character Creator is kind of how I got started with the real illusion tools. Um, I, I found it what I like about Character Creator, again, is it just makes the whole process feel a little bit more accessible, right? So um, a lot of the expressions and other things like that, you're dealing with different sliders. And so it looks like they are adding additional expression profiles to the characters, meaning you've got additional blend shapes, which gives you more control over what the characters can actually do, right? So how the different parts and pieces of the face can move around, um, other things like that. So I'm interested to see what kind of control the additional blend shapes give us inside of character creator for. So I can't tell if the uh, additional blend shapes are actually going to work with the uh, live face tool. So um, I'll be interested to see where that goes. So that's actually a tool I want to talk about a little bit more on the channel, being able to take a video, um, have it like automatically recognize the different parts of your face and then applying that to a character. I'm not sure if the extended expression profiles um, apply to that. I don't think that they do, but I'm not really sure. But it also seems like there are some tools for kind of converting between 
between the different uh, expressions and different sliders. So again, we're just going to have to kind of wait and see on that. And so I'm interested to see what these new sliders allow you to control. Um, again, I can't help comparing to like MetaHuman or something like that. I feel like these sliders give you a lot more control over what you can do with your characters. But again, we're just going to have to kind of wait and see how that works when this comes out. So they've also got a really interesting feature for creating smart skin. So it allows you to quickly adjust the colors of the skin inside of your settings. And so in addition to being able to adjust the color of the skin, you can also um, select between different characters. Right? So you can uh, decide to use one character or another and then jump back and quickly adjust kind of the skin color in order to really kind of dial in those characters that you're trying to create. So again, it feels like the whole drive behind this is giving you more control and a wider variety of creatable characters in here. So excited to try this one out as well. So they're also showcasing some tools that basically allow you to use maps to adjust where the skin color is adjusted. So if you have like non-skin areas or something like that, you can kind of mask those out and have the skin only affect those areas. So they've also got some skin optimization tools in here for kind of adjusting the way that different, uh, the way that the skin kind of blends together. All right, and so, and then also, um, having the ability to use like a blend map or a color tone in here. Um, this one, it looks like they've taken a piece of the map and kind of like added colors to it, which then allows you to add those colors to your characters, which this is a really interesting application as well. All right, so then the feature that I'm probably the most interested in or most excited about, it's not like super exciting, but what they're doing is they're optimizing the ability to neutralize the difference in the front and side textures, which I always felt like with the photo character creation, that was the area where things could get a little bit weird is where it went from the photo to the skin on the side of the character. Um, you could kind of have this pronounced line in here. So this is kind of trying to neutralize that. This characters from photos function is probably my favorite thing about character creator. So I'm interested to see the change in quality that we can get from the optimization here. Um, obviously there are some artists that do amazing things with this tool. I am not one of them, but it does allow you to quickly create characters with photos allowing you to um, really create characters that you want without having a ton of technical expertise. All right, so you can learn more about what's coming in these new versions by visiting this page right here. So one thing I do want to recommend is if you're going to try to buy any of these uh, separately, I would recommend waiting until these actually come out. Um, there are some bundle deals in here where you can buy bundled things that have a free upgrade to iClone 8 or Character Creator 4. Um, you're going to have to look on the page in order to see more of that. But if you're just going to buy these individually, you probably want to wait because uh, I'm not sure what the limitation is on upgrade fees or anything like that. From a cost standpoint, I know there's always a discussion in here about um, what things cost. Um, for me, you know, I mean, if you're doing character creation work and this makes your workflow faster, it kind of depends on what your time is worth. Um, if you're doing like just hobby stuff, then um, obviously the cost is going to feel a little bit steep. If you're doing anything professional and these tools are going to save you any amount of time, I think it's going to pay for itself really quickly. So um, that's my opinion. You are welcome to weigh in in the comments down below. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about Character Creator and iClone. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.